I think probably the best thing just open up for questions. Start over here to the right, Clay. You talked about the, the transition from this year to next year being a mass exodus, I think is the word you use. Do you have in your head the number of, of juniors you might, you might make the jump? No, it's at, uh, I kind of do, but we're just avoiding every all that conversation until uh, you know focuses on this bowl game. And how do you balance winning the game with <clears throat> getting those reps for replacements? So uh, you really uh, what the way we break down practice, we really always have always done this for bowl games. You get your you know, there's guys that have played, you know, darn near a thousand reps this year, so you don't bang too much on them. And then there's a group of young players that, you know, the Malik Hookers and and Isaiah Princes of the world that are going to be Jerome Bakers that are going to be heavily counted upon next year. So uh, we'll keep them a little bit after. We'll also extend. You know, if you have an inside drill, for example, I don't mean to bore you, but you asked a question. Uh, We'll go 5-5 five, five with the ones and twos, and then you go 15 reps with the threes, so that you just increase those reps during bowl practice. Front row medal, Dave. With the success you guys had offensively against your rivals with Coach Warner coaching from the press box, do you think that's the way you're going to go moving forward, both this season uh, and this season? game? This game we will. This game. And do you anticipate any coaching changes on your offensive staff during the offseason? I'm not sure. You know, I, I think uh, right now, I don't, you know, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm not in that evaluation phase yet. All focus is on recruiting and and um, winning this game. Second row left, uh, Ari. Uh, Coach, you guys, when you got here, set out to keep all of the uh, top of the talent in the state. Um, and you guys have done a really good job of doing that so far. Um, but there's been one program that's been able to come in and, and take guys from Ohio that you want, and that's Notre Dame. Yeah. Having been an assistant there, can you speak to the importance of the, you know, theology and some of the things that they have in terms of a presence in some of the Catholic schools that you guys are, are recruiting? You know, I've recruited for Notre Dame for many years, and there is a built-in, um, especially with a, uh, a Catholic school. But they've done a good job. And uh, uh, the team up north, I mean, this is Michigan State. Um, there's, there's been some schools, and that's been the history, you know, as long back as I can remember. You do the best job you can. Or, Locking down as as many as you can. I think we've done a pretty good job, uh, but we can always do better. And, um, with Chris Ash, you guys are—I mean, he's still going to be coaching through the bowl, and he's here preparing for the game and helping the team get ready. What's it like to help prepare the team with him during the day and recruit against him at night? Huh. Uh, that's a great question. We are. Uh, our class is so—you uh, know—there's only a few spots left. Um, a lot of the recruiting we're doing now is even for this, was it 17? So, um, you know, I've had Tom Herman and then I've had, uh, you know, Chris. I remember I had Danny Mullen um, when he went to Mississippi State and uh, many other ones and I can't remember them all. But uh, the one thing I always ask is just be extremely professional about your job, do what you got to do. And then, because uh, uh, he's the most important person in all of this, people in all of this, so the players. You, know, you look at Jerry who's given me some of these stats and I got a chance to win our 50th win in four years. So be very uh, much a professional. And he's done that. Chris has been great. Front row right, Rob. Urban, uh, can you detail your history with Greg Schiano a little bit? And how important was it his NFL background? What does that bring to this program? Uh, Coach Schiano and I go back many, many years. Um, I first met him when I was at Notre Dame, and he was at the Chicago Bears. We kind of hit it off, and then our path started going. I think we became head coaches at the same time at a very young, very young age, too young. Uh, uh, that was, what, 2001, and, uh, and we just always remained in touch and we became very close. Um, and uh, always had great respect for, you know, I'd go visit his programs all the time. He'd visit ours and uh, actually have him say, you know, give me a written up evaluation on what he saw from when he watched us practice. And I'd do the same because that, that's how much trust I have in him. What about the NFL? Well, I think any time you have a guy that, uh, you know, that's the catch name. You know, that's, that's a big part of recruiting. That's a big part of uh, just instantaneous respect, you know, and uh, and uh, 
we're real reliant, <laughs> lean on him quite a bit. Right next, uh, Tim. Yeah, Urban, a couple uh, follow up on that. What, what, what is the dynamic you expect out of the defensive coaches' meeting room over these over these several weeks with with Greg in there, I guess now and stuff? And uh, will he actually coach in the bowl game? No, no, or? no, yeah. he's not in there now. He's uh, uh, Luke. Luke's a defense coordinator. Yeah. And uh, did a heck of a job uh, for us this year, second in the nation in scoring defense. I see Greg, uh, you know, once Chris leaves, assuming a very similar role that uh, uh, Chris was an impact hire. You know, and I, as you notice, I like to do have two people kind of in the in that room. I don't believe in dictatorships. I believe in teams, teams on staffs too. So, yeah. And what made that? Chris Ash, Luke Fickle thing work in your mind? Was it two uh, incredible human beings? Uh, you know, Larry, Larry uh, Johnson, and same with uh, um, Coach Combs. Just incredible. That's the number one thing when I try to hire someone is I'm looking for chemistry people, good people. You know, a guy like Greg Schiano, you know, you have an opportunity to hire him. You got to make it work. Now, what's the dynamics? You have Luke Fickle, one of the best people I've ever come in contact with a very loyal Ohio State Buckeye, excellent football coach, uh, about as selfless as the guys I've ever been around. And, you know, uh, and he does a great job. You know, there's been, I remember several years back, I mean, I was everywhere I'd go, I'd just get, why are you doing this with him? Why are you not thinking? Because he's a hell of a coach and a hell of a person. And uh, 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 so that, that's what makes staves are good people. The other thing, you kind of touched on this a minute ago, but uh, Bowling Green, you get your first shot being a head coach. You know, uh, uh, obviously, Brian Kelly, his first job was Grand Valley State as a head coach, but he moved to Central Michigan. What is it about being in the MAC? Do you, I mean, did it allow you to kind of spread your wings, make mistakes, but also kind of go after it in your own way? I mean, what, what is it about being in that league, I guess, that. Uh, well, I remember my first, wings? first of all, I remember my first press conference. I think there was two people there. And, uh, that's, to this day, that's why I thank you guys for coming. I mean, that's, uh, but it, it, it gave you a chance to, uh, first of all, the, the MAC conference is pretty much every team that jogs out of the tunnels even, you know, because they recruit all the, you look at them and they're all the same body types, the same sizes. Some, some guys have a quarterback, and that's usually the team that wins in a good defense. But I, I just think it's, uh, uh, I think it's, Everybody, it's almost should be everybody should go, go should go coach in that conference. I remember helping pushing up uh, our, uh, you know, the, so you can take cameras of the practice. And I mean, it's much better now. The money is much better in that conference. We had uh, no video coordinator. The video coordinator was a student would come by campus, and I am not kidding you that and he'd stand like this in video practice. Not, you know, one of those big ones, yeah. but. Uh, so we obviously got some things changed there, but that, that's why I just think I, I appreciate guys like uh, Kerry Combs too that uh, worked his way up from ground zero, you know, and did a great job of coloring. So I just, uh, I think everyone should go through that process. Did Brian catch your eye? I mean, you know, obviously, did he catch your eye as a coach? Were you, uh, what he did at Grand Valley State and then in Central Michigan, did he catch oh, your sure. eye? Oh, sure, sure, and then uh, Cincinnati, because yeah. I'm an alum in, uh, I actually went down to Washington practice a couple of times, and, and, and uh, what he did at UC was phenomenal. Second row left, Lori. Coach, you talk about alignment with a staff all the time. With Greg, do you think it's going to be tougher for him because to get on the same page because he comes in with his own book? Well, the, our books are very similar. Those books have been have many, many conversations over the years, and uh, once again, the, the most important element of any hire to me is character and, and, and quality of human being, and uh, there's none better. Could you talk about Notre Dame and, and what you see in their team? Because Yeah, excellent team. A uh, couple first rounders on, on defense, probably more than that. Uh, very good. You just don't see chunks of yardage usually. You find uh, a formation, you find a situation, you find a team that uh, had a lot of success and uh, very good team. Offensively, you know, I know they, uh, I just hear, I haven't watched, studied them a lot yet. Uh, very good offensive line, that's her strength. They got a, a dynamic receiver, quarterback does a nice job. He runs as well as throws and just a, a you know, you got a team could be playing for the national title. Front row right, Austin. 
Ruben, uh, Cardell's kind of already suggested that he'll be gone after this year. When you look at his four years, uh, the highs and lows, I guess, what, what do you think, how should he should be remembered if he does end up leaving? Well, he's a national champion. He's undefeated as a starter. It'll be a, a story that uh, many people talk for many years. You know, we do wish him well in, in his career endeavors. I love Cardell and uh, very much appreciative of everything he's done. He, uh, once again, he's a national champion. And there's been only a few of those, you know, what is it, eight? Been eight of them here, and he's one of eight. Um, and I don't imagine there's ever been a quarterback that's undefeated as a starter. That'd be a good Jerry Emig uh, question. Maybe Kenny Guyton. Well, 10 or more starts. No. Kenny Guyton. Kenny Guyton. But, uh, but, oh, 10 or more starts. We've got a couple of 2 and 0 guys, but 10. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth Jazz made his way in our press conference today. <laughs> and, uh, and you were asked earlier about you know changing things up for the last week of the season with your offensive staff, and you're going to stick with that at least for one more week. What was kind of the motivation for that, and, and how difficult had been the communication throughout the year as you, you know tried to replace Tom? Uh, it was not easy. You know, I think uh, Ed Warner. You know, you, you can't to coach all five guys and to. Uh, be able to have significant input in the play calling is, you know, it's just you need a, you need a stable, you know, and Tim Beck and him were, that was a pretty good setup in the final game. Uh, far left over there, Doug. Yeah, but I think you mentioned how in the playoff era now there's just such focus on sort of those four teams and you guys lived it. Now you guys aren't in the playoffs. This is, you know, it's always been an issue when you go into a bowl and maybe you're not a national championship. Will your team be where they need to be to be ready to play in this game? Is that a concern? At all? Well, there's indicators. I've, I've, uh, I mentioned that throughout the course of the year. You know, uh, what are indicators of a team that's entitled? What's an in indicators of team that you know when you're defending national champ? When you're this, this, this. Well, academics and and effort and those type of things and, and uh, we had a great indicator and that was we got on uh, buses for three hours we went up to a, a team that doesn't necessarily have a lot of affection for Ohio State and uh, played as hard as we possibly played and won a game against a very good team so that's uh, that's a very good indication of what kind of uh, human beings we have on this team and uh, so I would anticipate that we'd play our tails off. And when you um, look at the season that, that JT had, still had, um, do you, did he get better, you think, this year? I mean, he was so good last year in the first time he ever played. Is he, is he a better quarterback now? Did he, did he back up in any way? Is he, is he pretty much the same? How do you think? I think the way he's finishing, he's, uh, you know, I, I haven't evaluated that yet. You know, uh, I think. You know, I think his injury did, you know, setting him out of spring practice uh, was not JT of himself and during the summer. And then obviously the, the dual situation we were playing with. So uh, I think any time that you are the starting court, like next year, he is the starting quarterback, I would anticipate a nice gradual incline of his during the season. Third row left, Eric. How's the health of the team right now? Um, I know that some guys like Paris Campbell was down with some stuff pretty much all Paris season. is fine. I think we're good. Is there any, um, obviously Adolphus can't play, but how, what does that do for your depth at the defensive line position? Uh, yeah, Tommy shut also where he uh, hurt his foot. I don't know how bad yet, uh, but that's, uh, we got depth issues inside right now on defense. But that's, you know, we, uh, Mike Hill's been playing pretty good. You got Joel Hale. You got um, Donovan Munger. There's another guy in there. Sprinkle. Sprinkle. Sprinkle's actually been playing much better. So it'll be a rotation. And then Joey Bosa goes in there quite a bit, too. What did you say about Chef, though? He's, 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 he's not quite sure what it, what it is. Back row middle, Steve. Hey, Coach, Last uh, question. I know that uh, on the teleconference you talked about your experience at Notre Dame. I was asked to ask you this question. Just uh, 
Notre Dame spiritually, football-wise, career-wise, what did that whole experience mean to you? Game changer. It was uh, when Lou Holtz made the call. I was in Fort Collins, Colorado, and uh, um, asked uh, me to join the staff at Notre Dame, and that was a game changer. And I remember walking through that campus and, and uh, uh, probably one of the greatest things that I remember is my son was baptized in the log chapel, the original building there. Father Reilly, who uh, passed away, was one of my dear, dear friends. And uh, then also my mom was uh, diagnosed, uh, the, was the second or third time that it came back. And I remember going to the grotto every night for, had to be four years on the way home from work. So a special place and uh, uh, a special place in my heart. And final questions, uh, second row, uh, right here, Dave. From NFL support, Dad, with you a quarterback. But what do you remember about the recruitment of Deshaun Kaiser out of Toledo? Were you guys close to pulling the trigger there? Yeah, real close. I can't remember exactly. Uh, Tom, I remember, is more involved in that. But, uh, yeah, we liked him. What have, what have you seen from him in kind of the bits and pieces you a big dude that runs well and throws well. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's doing done a very nice job for him.